Hello, and welcome back to Creeper giving me a tour of his Enterprise refit. Something like there, F, G, or H. F, G, I think this is H deck, maybe. I don't know. Uh, wow. But this is one of the main. This is one of the main lounges on the ship. So this is like the forward observation lounge. Uh, you can see there's like that set of uh, one, two, three, four windows at the front of the the lower saucer, and that's what this is. Very nicely done. This room it reminds me of some of the rooms that they were designing when they were um, uh, Martin and they were designing the uh, the Vesta, and they were Ooh, putting yes. this, all this detail into it. And I just remember thinking, man. They just keep, you guys just keep bumping the uh, bar, and at some point, you're going to have to put just as much attention to detail and, and things like the roof and just this kind of detail that it's it's going to be a full-time hobby. And Well, it almost gets stressful because we all, like, feed off of each other and we, like, take ideas from one another, and then I'll see, like, Martin or Spearmint, like, build something, and I'm like... Oh my goodness, that's like, I can't even imagine how you did that. So then I incorporate it into my builds, and then I do something, and they take it from me. And it's like, we, we everything just kept, keeps getting more and more detailed to the point it, it almost gets, like, daunting. But it does it, it does lead to good results, and I'm, I'm glad we have this community to, of, of really talented builders. Indeed, to, um, indeed. And this is, the, this is very much a hobby. It's not really a game so much as, a, as it's like a model builder's hobby. Because we all enjoy building oh, yeah. that stuff. I, I, I think this is the closest comparison would be like physical model building, like mm -hmm. with the amount of detail that we that we put in and the reference material we look at, like yeah, and it's, it almost it, supersedes Minecraft at this point. Like we're we're kind of just building it, replicas it, of the models themselves. Yeah, it's architecture, it's interior design, it's engineering, it's uh it's so many different things. It's not a game. It is absolutely a very detailed hobby. You ain't yeah, kidding so me, say hydroponics. This is the hydroponics bay. So... Dang, this is brilliant. Okay, I will not, I cannot take oh. credit for these, these center, this is a fully ripped off Birchie design. Birchie oh, Boy, kudos one of to the Birchie best holders on the server. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Phenomenal, phenomenally detailed builder, and I saw these little plant storage facilities that he built for his ship, and I was like, Hey, I'm just gonna steal those directly because I could not do it any better. So that's yeah, what I did. <laughs> yeah, this is absolutely stunning. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. If and you're not familiar I'm... with Bertie, he's uh, he's currently working on the JJ Enterprise, if I'm not mistaken. Oh he's yeah, saying. he's working on the JJ. He's working on a Franklin, mm -hmm. and he's got a couple of custom ships he's doing. He's basically anything that I've built that looks good. It's because I stole it from Bertie. Yeah, he's <laughs> he's. he's... He's a very inspiring builder. Yeah. And then we've got another room from the movie coming up. So this is the EVA airlock hatch that Spock uses in the first Star Trek movie to go see the V'ger probe. Um, if you stand back in this corner and look that way, this is the angle you see in the movie. So I, I really tried to replicate it as closely as I could. Very nicely um, done. Including the overhead, look at the roof. And look at the mm -hmm. details on the wall and then the flooring it's just and you even have a little space uh suit yeah. things there all uh, definitely 70 style yeah i i don't want to i don't want to toot my own horn but these are pretty recent textures these doors and um i actually designed these textures specifically so that i could do this room yeah i'm waiting i'm waiting for those space suits in star trek online just saying yeah um, and then if you come through here, we've got a little control room. So this would be like the docking control where if you want a travel pod to dock in here, you would you would help guide it in from this room. Yeah. And uh, what I'll do is I'll, and... I'll buzz outside here real quick into the uh, into the hold, as you can see, Creeper. Yeah. And we drop down. Just look at the detail of that, of that hatch. And getting these hatches to look good on a saucer with square blocks is very, very difficult. Um, I, I, bet he's, I bet you spent quite a few... Uh, a moments working on this getting the right angle and everything oh yeah stores. this was this was not easy yeah. um yeah so yeah this is this would where you this is where you would dock like a little travel pod if you want or there's, there's like a little personnel hatch too right here for people to come out of oh really uh, good idea um, that's a clever yeah. idea i uh, actually got that that from the mr scott's guide to the enterprise book 
oh. got that right from there because in that book you've got you got the main docking port but then there's also like a little secondary hatch for people to come out of because of course if there's a ship docked here you still want people to be able to get out so indeed, indeed. you've got you got two entrances See, I always thought it was just for personnel and uh, like a small work bee, but yeah, yeah, it stands to reason that a shuttle pod would definitely be able to dock there, because they'd want to be able to keep it inside of the ship, you know. So we're really like down in the bowels of the ship now. Um, so right here, this is another gravity generator like I was talking about, same design as what we saw up there. And then here, this is another shield generator. I like your design for your shield generators, by the way. Thank you, yeah. I have a concept then, I'm working on for the D. It's still mental, but uh, I was thinking something uh, very similar for um, uh, this design for uh, uh, stabilizers, like, um, what was I talking mm. about? Uh, inertial dampeners. So, yes. Then, um, all of the systems that produce a field of any kind, like gravity, shields, and then in between here, this is the actual um, structural integrity field. I'm trying to keep all of those systems together because I, in my head canon, that they they would all kind of like use the same rough technology, mm -hmm. so they kind of all feed off each other and like produce a all-encompassing field around the ship that like holds it together. So that's yeah. kind of the idea. So you've got the two sh shield generators with gravity and structural integrity right in between them. And they are a power power hog. Therefore, you know, having the conduit oh, yeah. directly feed it is very important. Yep. And then the very back of this deck, this is the waste system reclamation. So it, it feeds directly into the life support all the way through the saucer via this conduit here. And then it feeds through, and this is where all of the air would be purified. This is where the water would be kind of recycled and like the sewage system would kind of clean it out and pump it back through the ship. Um, so this is this is what that is. And this and will this be on top of the, the sensor pod, correct? Yep, exactly. This is the top of the planetary sensor. So below us is the actual dome on the bottom of the saucer. And then to the sides of us here, you, you've got these sort of walk-in sensor suites. So you've got the forward sensors, and this would like help enhance the communication systems and like forward ship readouts and stuff. And you've got the, the side ones, which would kind of serve similar functions. And yeah, if you look at the detail around mm -hmm. this, just you ha it's just so much detail packed into here that you could literally stand here and look and see multiple different um, uh, things and never see the same thing twice because every time you look at it, you see something new. Very cool. Very, yeah. very cool indeed. And uh, I've got some headcanon for this area. I, I imagine this this deck would probably be 0G because we're we're kind of below all of the gravity generators so i'm thinking that there would probably be minimal gravity on this deck so you would kind of have to float around in here and like do your work in a zero g environment or have magnetic boots or have magnetic boots and <laughs> fascinating <laughs> <ring on. laughs> that about does it for the saucer section so i'm gonna take us to the entrance of the secondary hall where okay. we will pick up in part two Alrighty, and again, um, this is the this is the Trekcraft server, and if you'd like to uh, check us out, definitely follow the link. Um, it's trekcraft.org if you're interested in joining the server. There is uh, it does require a server and a mod pack installed, nothing major. It's actually pretty easy to do, and I think by this time we probably have some instructions on the Discord things on how to do it, but it's all pretty basic stuff. We do, yeah. And uh, there's a whole channel that'll tell you how to join. There you go. Anyways, folks, and we will catch you in the next part where we get to tour the neck and the drive hall and hopefully the nacelles of uh, this Ooh, beautiful yes. build. Alrighty.